they go to group classes to burn like all oh, showing off I burn like 500 calories today I'm like you pay money for that <laughs> 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 like it just it's crazy to me like why would you pay money off to kill your own calorie right <laughs> yeah how did you start dating that was hard I didn't date anybody in South Korea so what's your favorite food Steak. what was your favorite food coming to the US Steak. Steak. That is a lot of freedom to take in at once. Yeah, I think it was a lot. I mean, I, I first place I got to was Times Square because they, from DC, they, with cheapest ticket, they could get in Chinese bus. They, they booked me and they sent me in a bus from DC to New York and it gets off some airport authority near Times Square thing. And then uh, I got in taxi and got out was like Times Square. And I, I literally first thing I remember was it was brighter than daytime. It's nighttime. And then in North Korea as a child, you always remember because the North Korean propaganda television says, we are going to make America a sea of lights by bombing them with a nuclear weapon. I was like, yeah, they don't need our help. <laughs> it's already a sea of lights here. <laughs> it's like it's literally brighter than daytime. And then... You know, it's what made me all of New York City was if you give freedom to individuals, like what they are capable of building with it, what is the potential of humanity was just for scary in New York City that looking at this Empire State building, you know, Rockefeller Center, like all these buildings would compete with each other and try to leave a mark in the world. And I think that one thing my ma my father told me as a younger was, when tigers die, they leave their skin. But when people die, they leave their names. That's why he told me to make my name long and lasting. And in America, you can do that. Not only dictator can do that. In North Korea, everything is about dictator. Every statue, we don't have ad, because you cannot compete with a dictator. We don't have advertisement. But in America, I mean, these people trying to make their name lasting and building the buildings out of their name, libraries, the symphony halls, everything. And I was just amazed that this is a land of individuals, that the individual matters in this land and they celebrate being an individual. And you are no longer about this collective thing. You get judged for who you are, what you are, what you are trying to do. And... I just felt that was so empowering. Because, you know, you cannot choose your ancestor. I mean, can you choose your ancestor? No. You cannot choose your birthplace. I think that was the greatest, op I mean, injustice I've ever seen, that people get punished for something they didn't choose. That is why racism is wrong. That's why punishing people for their birthplace is wrong, right? But in America, they only judge you for who you are right now. And that was America that I thought I was getting into, for sure. And initially, that's what my impression was. Yeah. That's, um, man, that's got to be a lot to, I'm, I'm just trying to wrap my head around all the oppression, you know. How old were you when you got to the U.S.? 21. 21 years mm -hmm. of oppression. Yeah. And then you get here, and literally any door you want to walk through is open. Yeah. It was, and I mean, there's so many funny things. Like, in I heard like New York City people are busy, and I go to Central Park, everybody just keep running, and I thought like they are running for work, but they were trying to burn off their calories. So in North Korea, we had to conserve our energies to survive. We don't know what gym is. We don't know what exercise is. Every day is a hard labor, and you come to America. Their problem is burning off calories. They pay money to burn off their calories, right? My girlfriends would go to like Equinox gym mm -hmm. and they have membership. They go to group classes to burn like, oh, showing off, I burn like 500 calories today. I'm like, you pay money for that? <laughs> 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 like, it just, it's crazy to me. Like, why would you pay money off to kill your own calorie, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. And like my girlfriends will show me their like dating apps, you know, their Tinder like left the right thing and there's 
any guy you wanna date, any even woman that you wanna date. There's nothing about your class, your sangbun or caste, anybody. You is a f- total freedom. Like who you marry, who you wanna be with is free. And I mean, literally, you get any food at nighttime in Uber Eats, right? Just every food is available anywhere. And in North Korea, I've never seen a cookbook. Because how can we afford, you know, five kilogram of like pork and garlic, like butter? We don't have those ingredients. There's no cookbook. There's no recipe. We just find whatever we can gather that day. And I never heard like cook was a job. And I mean, there were so many jobs that I never knew. There were people like wedding planners. Like in North Korea, there's nobody plans your wedding, you know. It's like party approval, that's it. And so many jobs, different jobs. And of course, understanding hedge fund for the first time. <laughs> it was just completely new, new planet. Man, it's, um, so what's your favorite food? Steak. What was your favorite food coming to the US? Steak. Steak? Because I mean, it's a, it's a, in North Korea, I think I had a thing, because the cows had more rights than us. So coming to America, eating beef and not getting executed, it was like giving a middle finger to Kim Jong-un every day, you know? Wow. <laughs> it was like, I'm like determined to as much steak as I can. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> what about, so the dating scene, that's something that I didn't, I didn't even, I never even thought about it until you just brought it up. So, I mean, in North Korea, you're not allowed to date. You're not allowed, you're, you're not allowed to think. Yeah. How did you, what? How did you start dating? That was hard. I didn't date anybody in South Korea because they, maybe this is the trauma comes with it. I never wanted to date Asian men. Mm-hmm. Like I was never attracted to it. And I never kissed Asian men. Like it's a, I think because of all my rapists, those Asian men, I was, I guess, maybe associating that with it. Yeah. So... In some sense, coming to be completely honest, I have nothing to against Asian. My son is Asian, people believe me, <laughs> I am not that. But maybe it was easier to come into America. People did not speak any Korean or Chinese. It was they were speaking English. They looked different. And I was able to start that dating at 21 again. And I dated a Russian Jew who escaped from Soviet Union as a child. As a Jew, they were also persecuted. So there was a lot of connection to understand the oppression. Okay. And then and then it was weird because in New York City, I was at 21 in a very conservative community relationship. And all my friends were like, what are you doing? You're 21. You need to supposed to test the water. Like you need to have fun. You need to, you know, self-actualize by dating a lot of people, see what you like. So they were like, keep saying I'm doing wrong by being in a committed relationship. That is my first relationship. So there was a lot of social pressure being in college and telling me that it's not okay to be that serious at 21. Yeah, that's a lot of influence. Yeah, and everybody, literally the people that I really admire, they were telling me that, you know, you, you are a woman, you need to enjoy your sexuality. And it, it was shocking. Did you find it... Did you get enjoyment out of dating and getting to know different men or? I did not date casually ever. So first person I was dating for a year, very seriously. The very first date wound up being a year long relationship. And second man that I met was my husband. Okay. So I don't think I ever got into American dating scene like that. And also it was interesting because uh, (laughs) they're all lovely people, but from North Korea, I thought, big, fat, bold men were attractive because mm. you were very starving in North Korea. And in America, like, I was just attracted to a lot of people that my fi- my friends did not find attractive. <laughs> 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 so my girlfriends were just so amazed. Like, you have a very odd taste. <laughs> well, when you articulate it, it definitely makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because it, I did not know the conventional American beauty standard. And so I did not know what it was for a very confused long time. And so, yeah, dating was very... Uh, but Americans were not judgmental at all. They knew my story. None of them ever judged me for my, what I had to 
do to survive. I'm very grateful for that. And yeah, I, they made me feel like a woman who's, who's worthy of desire. And I'm very grateful for that. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.